Welcome to another video by Ferris Technology. Today we're going to talk about the access event model. An access event really is the result or consequences of some user action. An access event occurs when a user moves from one record to another in a form, closes a report, clicks a command button on a form or several other tasks. Even moving a mouse generates a continuous stream of events. Access applications are event driven and access objects respond to many types of events. Access events are hooked into specific object properties. For example, checking or unchecking a text box triggers a mouse down and a mouse up and a click event for the mouse. These events are hooked into the checkbox through the on mouse down on mouse up and on click properties respectively. You use VBA to compose event procedures that run whenever the user clicks the checkbox. So access events can be actually categorized into seven different groups. The first group is windows, a form or a report that's on in a window on your in your access application. Opening, closing and resizing that window are some of those events. Keyboard events, you know, pressing or releasing a key on your keyboard. The mouse events that I illustrated just a little bit ago, uh, clicking or pressing a mouse button. Focus events, you know, activating, entering, or exiting a particular field or control. Data events, changing a current row in the data, deleting, inserting, or updating that data. And then there's print events, formatting and printing a report or a form. Error and timing events, happening of course after an error has occurred and some, or some time has passed. In all, Access supports more than 50 different events that can be harnessed through VBA event procedures. Of these types of events, by far the most common are the keyboard and mouse events on those forms. As you'll see in the following sections, forms and most controls recognize keyboard and mouse events. In fact, exactly the same keyboard and mouse events are recognized by forms and controls. The code you write for a mouse click event on a command button is exactly the same sort of code that you might write for a mouse click on a form. In addition, most access object types have their own unique events. When using an unfamiliar control or a new type of object in your access applications, be sure to check out what events and properties are supported by the control or object. So let's take a look at what kind of events might be available on a form. So I'm going to go ahead and open form products. And when we look at the design view here, we see on the event property sheet, and we can scroll down, there's 52 different events that are tied to the form in particular. There's an event procedure that is on the before update. And you notice when you begin coding an event procedure, you can see that it actually brings you to the code window and puts in the header and the terminator for uh, the particular application. The events most common uh, to multiple object types such as controls and forms and reports are those like the mouse. The click event is common for most. Double click, mouse down, and mouse move. And you can see the description of each one of those as they pop them up on the screen. Mouse up and the mouse wheel. All of those can be captured as events that the mouse might do when it's in the boundaries of your form. On the keyboard, common keyboard events are key down when the user presses a key or key up when the user releases the key or key press when a, a user presses and releases a key on an object that has the focus, a particular key or when the user send, uses a send keys macro action, okay? So when a form opens, one thing we need to be concerned about as we talk about events is that they happen in an order. 
like when an, a form opens. I'm only going to use a couple examples of form open and a form close because there's so many different objects that can have their various events and the order. And we'll put the link in the text below, in the description below, to make sure that you get a reference to that on the Microsoft website as to the order of all of the events that happen. But as an example, when a form opens, it opens, then it loads, and the resize event may happen. The activate event uh, would happen after that. Becoming current would happen after that. The enter, if you clicked on enter, and the got focus would happen. So all of these different events happen in their separate orders. And why that's important to you is if you have an event or a procedure that you need to run and it's not quite running when you expected it to, move up the order a little bit to put it on the on load event instead of the resize event or current event, for example. Moving it a little earlier up the stream allows that event procedure to run sooner than the original time that you had first put it in. When a form closes, the form exit, it, then it loses focus, then it unloads, then it deactivates, and then it actually closes. So all of those things happen in their particular order. Okay, now what I want to do is show you how to actually add a few event procedures to the mix here. On the switchboard, we're going to go ahead and take that products button over on the right. I'm going to show the property sheet here and then the products button. I want to put an on click procedure under that one and I will go to the code builder. It'll give me the beginning part, the private sub command products and the end sub. It'll give me that terminator as well. I'm going to go ahead and uh, paste the code that I want in there. And really all it is is a do command open form. Uh, and we're going to open the form form products. OK, we'll hit the save button there. Make sure they're all saved and close it. And let's go ahead and test that by putting it in form view. And when I click on the button for products, it opens up the form. So we're in good shape here. Now, what I want to do is put this one in design view, and I want to put a couple event procedures in here also. So we're going to go to the property sheet, and we're going to go ahead and scroll down to the bottom here, because I want to put a, an on close event in here. And we'll go to the code builder for that one. And what this one is, is it's a cleanup. A uh, little procedure that says if I have the print dialog box open, I want to get it closed. So I'm going to go ahead and paste my code in here. It just says, is the print dialog box open? And if it is, I'm going to just say close it and then end the subroutine. So just a little bit of cleanup before the uh, form closes. And we'll go ahead and hit the save button here and close this one. And then down at the bottom here, you have a delete button. And I want an on click procedure here that is going to be for deleting a record. But I want to be a little bit more precise. I want to check to see if the person really wants to delete the record instead of just doing it. So I want to present a message box. And then once I present the message box, then they can prompt answer the prompt yes or no. And then we'll move forward with the yes if they really do want to delete it or we will abort if they don't want to delete the record. OK, hit the save button there. We'll close it. And let's go, uh, let's go test that here. Close that, put it in form view, and let's see how that delete button works. Let's move over to a record that's not so important, uh, record 15. And then I'll um, hit the delete button, and uh, there's my dialog box. Sure, you want to delete the product? I'll say yes, and that product is deleted. And so we've effectively been able to delete that particular record. OK, so I hope you liked what you saw here, because if, if you did, hit that like button. Let's get it out to others. Um, the event model is a very complex model, and it runs the core of Microsoft Access. If you need more information, check out the link below that talks about the order. There's also more information at the Microsoft site online where you can learn more about the events and properties. And you know, send me a message if you're uh, if you have a question about a particular event, uh, I'll be looking there to try to answer those questions. So thanks for joining. We'll see you later.